Hello and welcome to Options in Plain English Advanced Edition. Today we're going to talk about a very timely topic. We're in the middle of earnings season and because of this, we're going to talk about expected move for earnings. Earnings reports represent potential large moves up or down in stock prices. Companies release earnings reports usually every quarter and these releases take place either after hours or before market opens. The options market incorporates these expectations by adjusting the implied volatility on options where there is an earnings report about to be released. It does this by bidding up or selling down a stock's options prices based on supply and demand. Immediately prior to the earnings report, options usually have elevated levels of implied volatility, reflecting a potential large move. The options that are most affected by the potential move due to earnings are the ones that are closest to expiration, since the earnings move represent the majority of their potential move from now until expiration. Let's take a look at a company's earnings cycle. This is a price chart of Facebook, and Facebook has been selected because they are going to report earnings tonight, so we, we, have an, we have an opportunity to see this in real time. So what you have here, the little blue symbols, the little light bulbs here, are the uh, indicators of an earnings report. Okay, so this is a price chart of Facebook over time, and this is uh, on the bottom, I've plotted the uh, implied volatility. This is not historical volatility. This is implied volatility over time. So all of this information has been taken from option prices. So if you look, if you look here, one of the things you can notice is that when there is an earnings report, usually there is, there could be a, a big move in the stock. So you can see here. So for example, this one, which was back in uh, late January. This is where the price was. Then the, the earnings report came out. Usually they are after hours or before market open. And there's a big move. And there could be a situation where there is no big move. Okay. So you can see here the one in October last year. The price was here. And then the move wasn't that big. The one back in July of last year, the price was here and the move wasn't that big. So regardless of whether there is a, a big move in the price or there is no big move or there is a very muted response to the, uh, to the earnings report, the option market believes and anticipates a big move. So if you look at the implied volatility, let's go back to July last year. Prior to the earnings report, the implied volatility starts going higher and higher and higher, anticipating that there might be a, a potential large move. So once the move happens, whether it was large or not, then the potential for this large move goes away. And because of this, implied volatility drops down. And when we are approaching the next earnings report, same thing happens. Starts going higher and higher and higher. It peaks right at, right at the point where we are the day prior to uh, the earnings report. And then the uh, report is released. And then the volatility goes down. And the move either happens or doesn't happen because we don't know what the market is going to do. Same here. Now, here in January is one of the situations where there was a large move, okay? So, um, implied volatility was going higher and higher and higher. Then the, uh, the earnings report was released. Volatility dropped down. And there was a big move, okay? So, this is the market is... Um, the market is a mechanism to uh, try to predict and incorporate most of the information that's out there. So some option traders could think, okay, so since I know that Facebook 
or any option or any stock for this matter but in particular facebook because that's the one we're analyzing here um if i know that there's going to be an earnings report then i know that there's going to be a big move so i'm very smart so what i'm going to do is i'm going to buy options because then if i buy a call and it shoots up then i'm going to be making money and same thing if there is a um if there is a a move down and i buy puts prior to the move then i'm going to benefit well the market knows this and because of this it anticipates the move and it uh, pumps up the uh, volatility in those options in fact most traders or most advanced traders what they do is they actually sell options prior to the earnings release betting on the fact that the uh, large move that's implied by the options is not going to happen so in this lesson what we're going to do is we're going to see okay so this volatility that the market is showing for that uh, for those options for this stock how not not how accurate but what is it telling me about the upcoming move and how can i structure a trade that incorporates this information into the um, into the the actual the actual nuts and bolts of that trade whether we're going to be bearish or bullish or neutral and just looking for volatility contraction one of the things you notice here is that after every release there is a volatility contraction okay there is what traders call a volatility crush it gets crushed right after the release why because the uh, the move that was expected whether it happened or didn't happen is not going to happen anymore so it shouldn't be priced into the options anymore so if we take a look here say for example here in january we were to look at the options and this what if we could have based on this volatility a prediction of the market a prediction that the market was making with regards to the move that was about to happen so for example at this point the market would be telling you okay i expect so meaning the um, average or my expectation is that the stock is going to move plus and plus or minus let's say ten dollars then you would know that for example this stock was trading at 222 and now it's 208 so the move was 14 dollars so the move was greater than the expected move that means that the realized volatility was higher than the implied volatility that the options were carrying in their pricing so what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at what the options are telling us about the upcoming price move so that we can structure trades based on that so if we take a look at the options chain this is facebook and we can see all the different expirations from 2 9 16 days to expiration until 632 and one of the things we can see here is that the um, implied volatility is inflated the most in the front expiration why is this so you take a look here 91 56 49 this is this is the implied volatility per expiration the reason why this volatility or this expiration is has the highest volatility is because there's only two days to go and um the 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 implied volatility contains two days of usual day-to-day -day price moves but one big earnings move so because of this the uh, relative implied volatility that we have for this expiration is high because it's going to have one big move in a very short period of time this one for example the one with nine days also has that same move so today because it's going to be tonight's move but it's spread out over more days nine 16 23 37 by the time we get to for example 142 days yes the uh, stock is going to move today but relatively if we talk about the whole spectrum of moves 
and the and all the moves that are going to happen from now until September, you're going to notice that the um, the today's move or tonight's move is going to be relatively minor. It's going to be it's going to be um, it's going to be diluted in all the other moves. That's why for earnings traders, if you want to get the most bang for your buck, you would go here because this is where the moves are going to be the the highest so because this is where the action is going to happen now if we want to know and this is this is the reason why we're here what i want to know is based on these options and this price and the price of the options and the and and, and all the different implied volatilities i want to know what the market is considering is going to be the move for tonight so let's take a look at how we try to get this information. The add the money straddle is the best real time indicator of a stock's expected move from now until expiration. It represents the market consensus for the expected absolute value, plus or minus, of the price move in the stock. Put another way, it's a statistical indicator determining a range for the price move where approximately 50% of the occurrences would be above and 50% below this number something similar to an over, under, and gambling. Again, the options contain the volatility information. So the options contain the information that the market is processing for uh, determining a range for the expected value of the upcoming move, which is what we are trying to get. Traders bet on the reaction to the earnings reports, either directionally, trading volatility, or a combination. Delta neutral pure volatility plays are common. So let's say, you already know that there's a, there's earnings coming out for a certain stock and the the expected earnings move is $10 and the stock is trading at 190 Well, if you think, you might think that, for example, those $10 up or down is too little and you think it's going to go higher or lower than that, but you don't know whether it's going to go, go um, up or down, but the magnitude of the move is going to be uh, larger than what the market is predicting. Well, then you would utilize a, um, a an option strategy for example you could uh, buy a straddle which is going to profit when the uh, move is large whether up or down or if you think it's going to go higher then you could buy a call or you could sell a put so there's there's a myriad of um, options or alternatives for you to put on option strategies based on the earnings report the expected move due to earnings is a good indicator to structure earnings trades the day prior to the earnings report's release. The add the money straddle of the nearest expiration on the day prior to the earnings announcement is a good indicator to gauge the potential move, but it also contains moves unrelated to this earnings move, since they usually expire on the Friday of that week at the earliest. So you have the day prior to the earnings release, the report's going to come out, and then there's still a number of days until it expires so the whole move which is contained in the add the money straddle has not only the earnings reports move but also the move pertaining to the usual day-to-day -day fluctuations until expiration this is what the add the money straddle contains so what in a way what we're trying to get is a way to isolate this move without the rest of that fluctuation contained in the add the money straddle. So if we take a look here at Facebook, trading at 195, we have the expiration with two days and we have the 195 straddle. So if we can sell the straddle, in this case, I'm going to sell it, but you could also buy it. The 195 straddle is trading at twelve dollars and forty two cents so what that means is the market expects facebook to move twelve dollars and forty cents between today and the expiration which is in two days so that move contains the earnings move which is tonight and also two two days worth of moves of normal day-to-day -day fluctuations in the price of the stock. So 
if we want to focus on the actual earnings move, we need to isolate the earnings move and see from the straddle what portion belongs to the earnings move and what portion belongs to the day-to-day -day fluctuations in usual uh, trading activity for the stock price. So now what I'm going to do here is it's going to be a little bit of math and you might be a little bit uh, bored or you're, you don't care about the math. And once we are done with it, you're going to you're going to see that you're not going to need it anymore. But I'm going to just show you where the uh, rule of thumb or the um, the actual formula that we use, where it comes from. So if, if you don't like formulas, you might want to skip this section, but it's something interesting. So to isolate the, the actual earnings move from the rest of the move due to normal fluctuations, we will use the concept of forward volatility to subtract the move due to normal fluctuations from the earnings move. We will call the everyday volatility that's not related to earnings ambient volatility. So remember, we have the whole the straddle containing the earnings and a bunch of normal days. Those normal days have normal volatility, not volatility related to the earnings report. So those ones we're going to call and traders call them ambient volatility. So the uh, at the money straddle is going to contain the earnings move and also a move due to ambient volatility. Using an approxi the approximation for any at the money straddle, which is a formula that um, it's a, a back of the envelope kind of approximation for any at the money straddle is um, 0.8, the price of the stock, sigma, which uh, in this case represents implied volatility. This is how traders usually refer to it. And the square root of time. In order, so the, the straddle has this value. We know that. And that's for any straddle, not only earnings. In order to be able to add the individual components over time and not the square root of time, we need to work with variance. So the variance is the uh, squared implied volatility. So variance is the squared implied volatility. So we squared everything. The add the money straddle square is the earnings move square plus the uh, ambient move or the ambient volatility move squared as well. So now we have the uh, add the money straddle squared being the earnings move squared and then this 0.8 square stock squared, the implied volatility, the ambient implied volatility squared, and time, so the straightforward time. So if we uh, solve for the earnings move squared, we have this. So the earnings move can be isolated here, and it's going to be the square root of the, the at the money straddle squared minus the ambient volatility move squared. So we have the little formula here. I've already mapped this formula here to a formula here in Excel. So uh, we have the add money straddle, the stock price, the uh, sigma for ambient volatility, and the number of days. So the number of days, the stock price, and the add money straddle are very easy to get. The um, ambient volatility is something of um, a bit of an art because this represents the volatility that the normal days are going to be left with. So when we uh, go to the platform, you're going to take a look and see how we usually determine this. But this is more art than science. And this is an estimation with good traders know more or less, for example, if, if uh, a stock normally trades with 35% uh, implied volatility and because of earnings, where now it has 70%, but you know that once the earnings are gone, the day-to-day -day is going to be 35 40%. Then you know that this is the volatility that's going, to be, um, that's going to be acting on the remaining days before expiration. So based on this, we can calculate the earnings move. And, the, um, and we can also get what percentage of the uh, full at-the-money straddle it is. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go through an example so that you can see how it works. And then I'm going to give you the back of the envelope, very simple, very easy formula to determine the expected move because of earnings. 
So we're looking at Facebook here, and the, Facebook is going to report earnings tonight, and it's trading currently at around one hundred ninety-six dollars. So we're going to go to the, to the uh, nearest expiration, to the closest one, and we'll take a look at the um, at the closest strike price, so that we can get the closest we can get to the um, to the add the money straddle. So let's sell the uh, one ninety-five straddle that's going to give us 1240 1242 1240 something like that this is what the add the money straddle is we got the price around 196 dollars fluctuating but 196 and if we go to the chart we're going to have to determine ambient volatility so what's the volatility that's going to remain after the um the uh, earnings implied the earnings related implied volatility drop well, if you take a look at a line that crosses more or less through an average of normal day-to-day -day implied volatility, we can see that it's uh, roughly 30%. So we could consider that the implied volatility is about 30%. Okay, so we are going to take these numbers. So 1240, the other money straddle, 196, the price, 30 the uh, implied volatility that is um, that is uh, acting on normal day to day, and well, we have um, today, tomorrow, and the day after. So we have two and a half days. So basically, uh, two point five days for the uh, the expiration that's containing in, that's contained in the other money straddle. Now, before we move on, I gotta say that. If you are using, for example, Thinkorswim, Thinkorswim already does a, this calculation automatically. So you can see it here in the Market Maker Move Triple M right here. Market Maker Move is plus minus just around twelve dollars. Remember, these are approximations. This is no exact science. This is more an approximation, just so you get a a feel for what the expected move is, and then you can put on whatever trade matches your expectation. So if you're using Thinkorswim or many other uh, platforms, you have you have it right here, tri triple M. So market maker move is plus or minus 1216. Okay, so just take a look at to take a look in here and that's it. But I'm teaching you how this number is obtained and what it means. So basically you get the uh, add the money straddle. The add the money straddle is all the way to expiration. So you need to remove the other days and you do so by applying a formula, a uh, kind of back of the envelope formula that you can use. So this is this is the this is the information that we're going to go with. So uh, now we're going to calculate it with our formula. So now that we have all the variables, we can just plug them into the formula, and we have a straddle value of twelve point forty, stock price of around one hundred ninety six dollars, and remember. These are approximations, so um, there is no there is no exact science for this. You just want to get a feel for what the expected move is, and based on that, structure some of your trades so that you can take advantage of that. The uh, days are two and a half because we're in the middle of one and two more. These are the normal day-to-day -day fluctuation because of ambient volatility. And ambient volatility, we said that it was going to be around thirty percent. Okay. So, with this information, we calculate an earnings move of $11.77. So, just around $12, which is what we were seeing based on the uh, Thinkorswim calculation. Thinkorswim's calculation was around 12 because they're using the implied volatility from somewhere else, etc. We are getting the information straight from the add the money straddle. So, I would, I would argue that it's perhaps a little bit more accurate, but... You know, you know, it's 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 a matter of of um, of interpretation, and it doesn't matter because what you want to do is it's not thirty, it's not five, it's around twelve. So that's gonna be the earnings move, and based on that, you can, for example, uh, put on a uh, short iron fly, for example, or in and and try to structure it so that you make money if it moves less than this, or a long. Um, iron fly or a long straddle 
and, um, and and make money when it moves or if it moves beyond this magnitude of the move up or down so in any case in summary what this tells us is that when you have an earnings coming up an earnings report coming up for one of the uh, one of your the stocks that you're interested in what you would do is um, take the uh, nearest expiration look at the price get the add the money straddle and then a certain percentage of that at the money straddle is going to be your potential earnings move or your uh, approximation the uh, what the market is predicting the earnings move will be so here I have a little a little cheat sheet so you have the day prior to the earnings release and then you have expiration if you have many days to go the percentage of the full at the money straddle is gonna be lower and if you're very close to it, almost the whole move, almost the, the Adamone straddle almost only has that move. So the percentage is going to be higher. So from five days to expiration to around one day to expiration, which would be ideal, you would have a percentage of um, maybe 85 to 95, 96 percent of the move. Is going to be your earnings move so for example we have two and a half days what I would do is take the add the money straddle and then look looking at here I would get maybe 93 94 percent and that would be a good back of the envelope move you don't need to be exact just know that if you take the add the money straddle for the front expiration and you take a percentage of it ra ranging from 85 to 95 percent that's going to give you a very good approximation for what the earnings move is going to be. It's all based on the add the money straddle because the add the money straddle contains the move or the expectation for the move from now until expiration. Of course, this is this is going to be an approximation because you don't always have the add the money straddle value because the price might not be one of the available strike prices and also you don't have uh, perfect liquidity so maybe the bid ask is going to be wide so maybe those numbers are not going to be exact so you don't need to be exact you just need to get a good feel for what the earnings move is going to be and that you can you, you can get by looking at the other money straddle and getting between 85 and 95 percent of it if it's very close go closer to 95 if it's uh, pretty much five days away so if someone's reporting on on a Monday for example then use closer to 85 but ranging in, in that range from between 85 to 95 so I hope this was clear and that uh, this is going to help you once you know this number now that you now, now you know whether you want to buy calls sell calls buy puts sell puts sell a straddle buy a straddle do a ratio spread um, whatever it is you want to do now you know a very important piece of information which is the expected earnings move so i hope this is helpful for you guys and going forward please uh, subscribe and leave me a comment um, here below and um, thank you for your attention and goodbye